In this section, we'll dive into how LLMs work and discuss training LLMs. In the context of large language models, an AI model is a type of neural network, specifically a deep neural network, based on the transformer architecture. There are three major stages in training large language models like uh, ChatGPT. Let's start with the first one, creating the pre-training dataset, which means downloading and processing the internet. This is the foundation stage where a base model is trained on a huge and diverse collection of high-quality internet text. The idea is to expose the model to as much useful information as possible so it can learn grammar, facts, reasoning patterns, and more. Now, you might think this involves downloading the entire internet. And uh, you'd be mostly right. But the final dataset used for training is heavily filtered. One good example of this process is the FineWeb dataset. You can check it out here, on the Hugging Face Hub at uh, HuggingFace.co. All major companies like OpenAI, Google, and Anthropic use datasets like this to train their models. What's interesting is that even though the internet is massive, the final dataset is only about 44 terabytes and includes around 15 trillion tokens. That might sound huge, but it actually fits on just a few hard drives. So, how do they go from the entire internet to a much smaller, cleaner database? The answer is processing and filtering. Here's how the process works. This is the pre-training data pipeline. The first step is uh, using a data source. Most of the raw data comes from Common Crawl, an organization that's been indexing the web since 2007. As of 2025, it has archived over 250 billion pages by crawling the entire internet regularly. The next step in the pre-training data pipeline is URL filtering. The first step here is removing unwanted websites using blacklists. This includes sites with adult content, spam, malware, shopping, or dating. This helps eliminate low-quality or irrelevant material. Web pages are stored as raw HTML which includes code, navigation bars, and styling. This is the HTML code of this page. The goal here is to extract just the meaningful written content. No HTML or JavaScript code, no menus, just the core text. Then comes language filtering. Language classifiers are used to keep only pages in the target languages. For instance, FineWeb keeps pages that are at least 65% English. This step also allows developers to decide how multilingual the model will be. The next step is the duplicating the data and quality filtering. Duplicate or near duplicate content is removed to avoid repetition. Additional filters target low-quality text that could hurt the model's performance. And finally, pages containing personal information like addresses or social security numbers are identified and removed to protect privacy. After all of these steps, you are left with a refined, high-quality dataset, like FineWeb's 44 terabyte of content which covers everything from earthquakes facts to general knowledge articles. I took the first pages from FineWeb and uh, put them all here in this text file, and I end it up 
with this. At this point, all the clean text is concatenated into one long stream and then tokenized. That means it's broken down into small pieces called tokens, which the model can understand and learn from. The model sees all of this data as one massive sequence of tokens. Note that AI models have a knowledge cutoff date because their pre-training data is like a lossy zip file of the internet, filtered, compressed and outdated, missing the latest updates. For example, the cutoff date for GPT 4.5 that was released in winter 2025 is June 2024. So, in a nutshell, pre-training begins with transforming raw internet content into a dataset, which is then used in the full pre-training process, including tokenization and neural network training to enable an LLM's language understanding and generation. Also, keep in mind that the performance of a large language model depends heavily on the quality and size of its pre-training dataset. We are now taking a break and in the next video, we'll go over the next step in training a model, the tokenization of the pre-training data.